Hello, I guess there are some people here already. Um, I think you can raise your hand or say something. Um, I am going to do this in English. This is um, about English, advanced English learning, B1, B2. Um, I, ich kann es auch auf Deutsch machen. Ich kann es auch auf Schweizerdeutsch machen. Also, parlare anche italiano. Um, but I'll do it in English, okay? Unless someone just has a problem with that or uh, really needs an explanation, I can also explain it in one of those languages. Okay, yeah, looks like some people are here. Please do it in English. Okay, I will, yes. <laughs> um, so, got a few people coming in. Now, I wanted to ask a first question before I actually start. And that is, um, how many of you are teachers? If you're a teacher, you can, if you see down below, there's this little chat function, it says chat, you probably know this, just say, yes, I'm a teacher or teacher, or whatever. Okay, great. So this is great. So we have a few teachers, some teachers in Spain. That's really great. Okay, so you're you're my audience. And if there's other people out there who who are doing other things or just want to listen on, that's fine. Um, but I will direct this at the teachers. So I have one question to start this off with for the teachers. And I'm going to post this question in the chat and it'll have like a one, two, three. So you can just answer it very simply for me and then uh, it'll help me understand um, where you're at. So the question pertains to the situation we're all in. Um, some of you might be teaching normal classrooms. That might still be going on. Some of you may be completely online. Some of you mixed here. So that's my question. Just answer with one, two or three. Okay, a lot of online so far. Okay, great. So um, I will be. Um, let me let me tell you about what's going to happen in our in in this um, workshop, which is very short, half an hour. First, I'm going to talk about our app, Story Planet English. I think you need to understand that app before you can understand. Um, what else I'm going to talk about. This will all be very quick, unfortunately. I will then talk about a workshop, which is a writing workshop that I have done uh, several times, mostly in China, um, but this can be done in Germany and, and anywhere. Um, virtually um, is possibly a bit more of a challenge. It is possible though. Um, obviously in class, you can be more creative with, with groups and stuff like that. But again, I would work with each teacher if you wanted to have a workshop like this. And the last thing I'll talk about are some resources that we have. So um, free resources that you can download immediately after this. And, but also I'll have some questions there about paid resources to see um, what kind of things you might be interested in. Okay, I'm going to start sharing my screen now. And it's going to be PowerPoint. Oh, that's going to work out like I want it to work out. No, nope, I'll just share my screen then. Okay, let's start from the beginning. Okay, so here we are. This is Story Planet. That's the email address that you can reach me at. So. Um, if you have any questions after this, I don't fit in. I won't answer them. I can't answer them. Please do write any questions you have in the chat. I will try to address them. We only have 30 minutes. So just write me an email if you have any question. That'll stay up as you see on every page. This is just a quick thank you to um, our writers, mostly. Everyone you see over here are writers who contribute to Story Planet English uh, specifically. We also have Story Planet Deutsch, but I'm going to focus on English today. And these two guys over here are our programmers. So just as important without these people, this app wouldn't be possible. So um, these are a few, some of the other apps that we do. We also do apps for other publishers, but these two, Deutsch and English are our most sophisticated, I think, and interesting apps. We're looking at Story Planet English here. 
The goggles are because uh, the designer, we said, what is this app about? Because you dive deep into the language. So it's about, you can see better when you're in the language. That's the idea behind that. Okay, so the way the app is, it's free to download. And when you go in, you get access to one free story. This one happened to be written by me. A lot of them are, not all of them. As you see, we have a team. Um, so yeah, um, that's nice. You, the, your students, or you can just get it and check it out and see if you like it or not. Um, you can also click the read more stories, which means, oh, I want access to more stories. We have a, over 50 stories right now. Um, and there's also teacher materials for lots of those different stories, but it does require you to, to pay the um, subscription. I'll get into that later. Um, there's other ways you can also access as a um, as a, a teacher with edu apps. It's something specific to Germany, or you can have a bulk license using a, a voucher code. Okay, so now you're inside. You can choose between all these different stories, and I'll just show you an example of what that experience is like. So I'm in the story, the Umbrella Run. It's actually a true story that I, um, my grandfather told me. <laughs> and um, as you see, some of the words are in bold. And all of those words are annotated. They are, I would say, B1 and above. So you need to have a certain level of English, but they're tricky words, um, especially phrasal verbs like chip in. You know, people may know the word chip, but chip in is very specific. You know, to contribute, donate money, or time. So this is something that you can do um, with the stories. And if you click the heart, it gets you get your personal learning list. So here you have all the words that you've collected or the phrases. Um, you can click on them again just to see, OK, what was that? What was the sentence it was in? What's the context? And then you click Start Exercises. I mean, whenever you want, you can switch between these two, between reading and uh, learning. But when you're in the learning section, then you just go through these exercises. They're simple ones, which are multiple choice. You see the sentence. Uh, pretty much easy to figure that one out. They do get a little bit more difficult as you progress. You can see here, this is exercise four now. Um, this one's actually kind of easy too because you have the and, so you probably know it's gonna start with a, a vowel. Um, I'm scrolling down, you can also get tips. So for in this case, it, with inkling is the correct answer, it will give the definition just in case you're a bit lost just seeing the sentence. And then the, the most difficult exercises as you move forward, the actual spelling exercises. So this one's tricky, very easy, no problem. So, well, if you're telepathic like I am, this is from a story, it's what? So that might be difficult. Um, it, you might remember it because you've been exercising it. You can use the tip function to add exercises. And the correct answer is it's a snap. Okay, there's also a review function after a few minutes, um, after doing a few exercises, you'll see what you missed. You can just say, oh, okay, that's what it was. So it's, this is what Story Planet is. It's a mixture of, of reading, contextualized learning, and then very, very individualized focusing on the vocabulary that um, you struggle with. Um, what's really cool about Story Planet is every single day of the week, Monday to Friday, we add a new chapter of a story. So um, it's constantly building up and it's nice because the students just keep getting new things and it keeps them engaged. Okay, so that was the app, um, really quick. Again, very easy to find storyplanet.uk for the English version, .de for German. And again, if you have any questions, that's where you're gonna go. Okay, um, now I'm gonna talk about the writing workshop. And I'm gonna base this on an example um, in our case, which is um, the story that I wrote called Horses Don't Sweat, which is actually based on uh, a few true stories about the pandemic, um, but told from a young person's point of view. So each writing workshop will actually feature a story that I will present or that the author will present. And then um, ideally to inspire the, the um, students to write their own stories then. So how is the writing workshop structured? Basically, you would start it, as I'm sure you're all familiar with, if you're presenting a new content, you prep the vocabulary. Um, this is really great to do in groups. So online, you might have to use a, a, a break off um, or break away function on Zoom or something like that. You have to be creative, how that can actually work. So the prep in this case would be something like, you know, do you know anyone who had COVID-19? 
what was their experience, um, and then tell the people in the group to talk about that, and then make a list of vocabulary about the pandemic. How is it spread? So you can get words like, you know, catch the disease um, or, or pass it on. Um, why is it dangerous? Um, what are the symptoms? Uh, what can you do to protect yourself? So they're going to start building up all this vocabulary in English that is related to the pandemic. And then in this specific, specific story, it talks about this, this guy's strategy and how he dealt with that. Um, so the other thing I would ask is like, what do you do? You're at home a lot more. What do you do in that time? Um, hobbies, social media, family activities. So that's the prep vocabulary part. Then um, after that group session, maybe 15 minutes, um, I'd read the story out loud. In this case, horses don't sweat. Might be able to fit it in in this session um, if you're interested. Um, so they just listen. So since they were prepped, some of that vocabulary they're going to be ready for, but not everything, obviously. So afterwards, um, everyone is given the story to read. Then they weren't able to read it before. Um, and they can read it in the app too, or just a printout. And as they're going through it, they can underline um, any vocabulary they don't understand. I know this as a current learner of Italian, or when I was learning German, that you know I would do that. I would just like, oh, what is this? And then I'm going to look that up later or ask somebody. Um, so they would do that. And then um, the, you break up into groups where they will actually write a story. And each of the person in the group will to choose two of the voca vocabulary they found most tricky. And using those, let's say you have a group of five people, then they have 10 words. And using those words, they have to write a new story. And obviously, as a writer myself, I have a lot of experience doing these kinds of things, also doing writing workshops. So I'm going to give them some tips um, in this kind of frontal part here. Then they would break up into groups again. If this is done virtually, probably this would all be one session, and then there would be a break, and then they would write, and maybe a week later, we would have the next round. Um, normally, the writing session, if it's live, I like to go around to the different groups and to see how they're doing, encourage them to stay on track. Um, the teacher and their assistants can also help with that. And then at the very end, each group chooses someone to read their story. Um, what I really like about this, it is a writing workshop, and it's about reading, but there's a lot of listening, as you see, a lot of speaking. Um, so it's really interactive, and that's what I really like about it, as opposed to Story Planet, the app itself is obviously very, very reading-based. Um, this brings it to life. Okay, then I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Um, if anyone has any questions now, that you're welcome to ask them now. Otherwise, I am going to see what time we have. We have 3.30. Yes, we have time, we have 15 minutes left, that I will just read this story to you, Horses Don't Sweat. These stories are really short. They're five paragraphs. One paragraph arrives on Monday, you know, when they're first broadcast. The last paragraph will arrive on Friday. So um, we call it snackable content. There are many stories. Um, young people love this. They're very used to it. It doesn't require too much of their time. It appears in their push notifications. Um, so. I'll just read the story. I prepped you a little bit. And then um, afterwards, we'll talk a little bit about it. So horses don't sweat. Do you believe in reincarnation? I'm not sure if I do. But if I were an animal in a past life, I bet my bottom dollar I was a horse. No, I'm not an equestrian. I'm just fascinated by horses because they're so graceful and resilient at the same time. Most of all, they inspire me. And it was my infatuation with horses that helped me get through my illness. Yes, I was one of those who caught that nasty virus going around, the one that affects your respiratory tract. I was taking all the precautions, washing and sanitizing my hands, wearing a face mask when I went out, avoiding crowded places. But my mother is a doctor and she must have picked it up at the hospital and passed it on to me. This virus is just so insanely contagious. My mother was then quarantined in the hospital. My dad was traveling on business, so when the train stopped going, he was blocked in another city. 
I only had my 80 year old grandma to look after me. And the last thing I wanted to do was infect her too. The elderly are more susceptible to the disease and the fatality rate is much higher. Someone once told me, horses sweat, humans perspire. There are so many messed up things with that statement. First up, sweat and perspiration are really the same thing. Just that perspiration is a little more formal or elegant. Second up, horses are light years more elegant than humans. So for me, they are the ones who perspire. So I decided not to sweat it and keep my cool. I stayed locked in my room watching YouTube videos and my grandma would slip food through the door every once in a while on paper plates and with plastic cutlery. Needless to say, I went through hell. I had this very painful cough that seemed to come from deep in my lungs. I was tossing and turning so much in my bed. I really worked up a sweat. You might have heard the phrase, to sweat like a horse. That wasn't me. I perspired like a horse, profusely. The only thing that distracted me were all the insightful videos about horses I was able to watch. Horses are so muscular and wiry that they don't eat typical sources of protein like meat. They mostly just eat oats. So I asked my grandma to make lots of porridge for me that week. It really soothed my soul. After a week of this ordeal, I slowly started to feel better. Unfortunately, despite all of our precautions, my grandma got sick anyway. By that time, my mother was able to come home. It could bring her some special antiviral drugs. I don't think she was supposed to do that since the drugs hadn't been tested for this new virus, but it worked. And my grandma did not get nearly as sick as I did. My grandma smiled and showed me an old oil painting of an angel fighting off a whole legion of devils. The angel was relaxed. It was all the devils were sweating. No, horses don't sweat. They perspire. That's the story. Um, as you can tell, possibly a lot of difficult vocabulary for um, your students. So they're gonna, they'll have picked up some of it, maybe most of it. Um, but definitely being able to read it again, thank you, <laughs> being able to read it again on paper, they're going to say, okay, I want to understand that a little bit better. And then they'll go through it. Now, obviously, a lot of, um, you know, illness-specific language in there, adjectives, nouns, I don't need to go into all of that. Personal things that I think are, are nice or that especially advanced learners appreciate are phrases like, I bet my bottom dollar or don't sweat it. Um, work up a sweat, like all these sweat related things, sweat like a horse. <laughs> um, and then of course, phrasal verbs. That's something that we really in intentionally build into these stories, just because we use them a lot in spoken language. I'm always catching myself using them and write them down, must integrate in a story, you know, like get through an illness. Um, I, I picked it up at the hospital, I passed it on to somebody. Um, your grandma looks after you. Okay, look after is a phrasal verb that people may be familiar with. Um, but, you know, they're tricky because they don't mean, you know, as you know, they don't mean necessarily what, what it's written there or fighting off um, stuff like that. Okay, so that was my story. Um, now uh, we, we have some time, I think, to switch over to um, some of the resources I was talking about. Um, so I'm just going to close that and share my screen again. Okay, share Chrome. Yes, just share Chrome this time. So I hope you can all see my screen now. So the resources. First off, the app is free. Um, again, with just one story, and it's easy to find. I mean, this is on our website, but I'll just, you know, if you type in storyplanet.uk, this is where you'll come. So this is something you can tell your students, it's easy to find, and there's directly on this page. And if they use their mobile iPhone, they'll find it. It's, it's um, 
adaptive, so it's easy to read on a mobile, and then it'll just click here and then just download it. Okay. Um, so that's for your students. If you're a teacher, you can go to the same page and just click here, Story Planet English page for educators. With educators, I also mean people who might be homeschooling, so you might be a parent that you're teaching. So you're going to go to this page. I just prepared it in advance in case uh, the links weren't working. Um, so it's similar to the other Story Planet page, but it's just very more specific. You know, this is for English as a foreign language, or easy English as an additional language. Um, it also has the links, it explains how it works. Nice added on here is if you click here, we have a um, teacher's guide, which is absolutely free. It's just for this one story though, the one free story, but please try it out. Go there, download this, and just try this free story with this free teacher's guide so you can get a feeling for what we offer. Um, I should note we just recently got a third party review from the educational app store, five stars. We're really excited about that. Um, they really understood what we're doing here is very specific to, to, um, to reading and, and, and relevant language for modern readers, modern learners. So what does a guide include? It will include um, the actual text. It has classroom activities in it, a um, little bit of explanation here. Um, so it has the text, um, some things you can do before the story, some things you can do after. We also have similar to the writing workshop, you can do this yourself, you don't need me. Um, you can do a, a writing um, exercise. So my first question here is, um, oh no, I'm jumping ahead. I'm not, I'm not following my own notes, there you go. Let me go back to Story Planet English for Learners. So um, I don't think I can do this as I'm sharing my screen. Okay, I'll ask the questions later. Okay, just remember remember what we're talking about. We got about six minutes left. Okay, so we got the app. We got this free teacher's guide. However, you can also buy a teacher's guide with more stories in it, with things you can print out and everything. And um, plus, I'd like to encourage you when you're on our website, wherever you are, um, if you're in the story planet, wherever you are, you'll see up here the teacher area. Please go there as well, and you'll discover other things that we offer. Um, but please sign up for our newsletter because there's always new things coming. And if you sign up for the newsletter, it's a simple form. You tell them what, tell me what language you're learning or teaching. Uh, you just need to give your email, that's it, and agree that we can send you things by email. So it's all um, GDPR conform. Just some of the other things we offer, the vocabulary training for German. These are all for mostly for German learners. Um, another thing that we do offer, and I will just show this quickly, but it's really cool and it's just becoming available, um, is uh, the language level evaluator. So what this is, um, if, obviously, once you have access to it, which you have to pay for, you can put in a, um, a text, Let's just copy in the text here. Um, and you analyze it, this is obviously a very short page, short one, but it'll tell you approximately what level it is. So you may have text that you're preparing and that you have from other resources. You just want to see, oh, how difficult is that? Um, you can then say, oh, okay, it has a lot of C1 words in it. What were those? You can see those. Some of them are other. Those are ones that were mistakes or word or names. Um, so this is one kind of cool thing you can do with it. Um, we don't have grammar for English. It works for German, though. You'll see the sentence lengths. Obviously, there's not so many sentences here, but this will help you understand the complexity of it. And what's really cool is you can um, also export this. So I'll just show you an example of, um, um, I guess I'm, I'm just sharing my, um, let me just do that again. I'm going to share the screen. Okay, here's an example of horses don't sweat, the this, this story you just saw. If I had put that in the language level evaluator, I would get um, this list, which then I can sort alphabetically. I can sort it by level. Up here, I just exported the more difficult ones. I can sort it by part of speech. If you're focusing on adjectives, you can just focus on those. You can also sort it by um, when it appears in the story, so you have a chronological list. So that's, um, that's the language level evaluator. Again, all really quick. We have, um, okay, 
So, so someone asked, where is this analyzer? Um, where do I have to click? It is um, currently not available without a login, without paying for it. Um, we will have a sample version of it up by the beginning of January, I would say. And, but that's uh, just for German, um, but it's basically the same concept. So now my questions for you. So question one. So full access to Story Planet is one ninety nine a month. So that would be about 24, 23 um, a year. Would you be interested for your students in buying a license for 20 or more learners for only twelve ninety nine a year per learner? So either you or your school or your district. So if you could answer that, this is not binding. I'm, I don't even know who you are. So just answer with A, yes, B, no, or C. Write another price, say, no, I would pay 10 or, oh, that's great. I would pay more. Okay. So we're getting some answers, that's cool. Um, so the next question, oh, by the way, if you, if you um, get this package, it'll, it will include a teacher's package. We'll include a teacher's package with five stories. So that's an added value as well. Um, so my next question would be, some people, I, I know teachers personally, their students don't have mobile phones. Or, or not all of them do. So they, you know, if the app is not an option for them. So my next question would be, you can still buy a teacher's package independent of the app for 15 euros. Um, so it's not, it's, it's like I showed you for the Harry Tomato, but it's with five stories, including um, homework assignments, printouts and stuff like that. Um, okay, so would you be interested in buying a teacher's guide like the one I showed you? with materials for five stories for 15 euros. So this is if you didn't get the app. Do you think that's a fair price or no? You're creative, you do your own teacher's materials. There's a lot of teachers I know do, but sometimes it's nice to have that ready for you or um, another price. Okay, great. Thank you for this coming through. You're helping us decide how we, <laughs> how we, uh, market this. And then my last question pertains to um, the language level evaluator. I know that wasn't the topic of this um, workshop. But it is something really cool. It's something up until now only our developing partners have had access to, which was the University of Darmstadt and um, Ernst Kletschbrachen, who uh, definitely helped with the, the solidity of the language lists in the background. So my question here is, which, You'd be interested in that. Um, this is about 10 euros a month. Actually, it's 15 euros a month access, but we would offer it for one year access for 100. We do have a few teachers already using it right now. They really love it. Um, so just, I want to get the feeling, is that something that would also interest you besides um, Story Planet? Okay. So, um, great. So, I don't know who you are. Um, this is an impersonal uh, exchange somehow. I don't see you, don't hear you. So if you are interested, um, you're welcome to write an email to info at storyplanet.uk or um, go on our website at storyplanet.uk and look for the teacher's area. And the first thing you'll see in the teacher area is signing up for a newsletter. We send a newsletter out about every two or three months. We have one minute or any other questions that anyone might have. One thing that's, that our users always ask is, can we listen to the stories too? Not yet, but that is coming. Um, we have recorded a couple of them. We just need to integrate them into the app. That is something a lot of people ask for. So that's coming. I thank you for taking your time as well and for being a part of this. I had to talk really fast. Um, and thanks for your responses. Thank you.